For this time, uh, you read the second part of Hobbes. And here, uh, I've got a sentence. Oh, uh, well you can't hear me. So, uh, hello? OK, I'm going to just have to speak up, OK? <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, so I'm going to pick out this sentence, um, which is an important one for the section that you read for today. Um, and basically, you know, the first thing we want to notice here is that he's, he's, uh, Hobbes is insisting that uh, you can't say anything um, that's true or false, or there is, there is no concept of true or fal false without language. Okay? And he's explaining it with, uh, with this paragraph here, or with this, this passage, and I'm just going to read it because we're going to go over it carefully. When two names are joined together into consequence or affirmation, as thus a man is a living creature, or thus if he be a man, he is a living creature, if the latter name living creature signify all that the former name man signifieth, then the affirmation or a consequence is true, otherwise false. For true and false are attributes of speech, not of things. And where speech is not, there is neither truth nor falsehood. Error there may be, as when we expect that which shall not be, or suspect what has not been, but in neither case can a man be charged with untruth. So if, if Hobbes is right, the first thing that we, 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 we notice is that we have a, a kind of test for if, uh, to determine if somebody's using human language or language like a human. And um, that test is whether that person or entity is able to lie. If that person or, or that entity is able to lie, then they're using um, language the way humans use language, right? And that's, you know, that's, that's, what, that's what he's asserting here. Um, and I want to go into some of the details of this assertion. Um, the first thing um, is that he's, he's saying that single words cannot be true or false, right? That, that you need to have this connection between one word and another, right? So that's what he's, what he's indicating, that you have to have a connection in order to have a, a true or false statement. Because it makes no sense to just say the word man or dog or chair. If you just say the one word, there's no way that anybody can say that that's true or false, right? Because you're not really saying anything about that man or that chair or anything. There's no, you, there's, there's no way you can apply uh, any kind of measurement of truth or, or falsehood, right? So you need to have two names, two words linked together in order to, to, to have the quality of truth or falsehood attached to anything. So it has to be language and it has to be a connection between at least two terms. So he gives this example, right? Um, and the example is a man is a living creature. And what we notice um, is that we've got the two things and then we've got a connection, right? Is, right? It could be is, is not for, you know, and, and in case it might be, it'd be false, right? Uh, but is is the connection and that connection is important. You need to have the, the two, the subject and the predicate and you need to have some kind of connection, right? They can't just be kind of floating out there um, you need to link them in some way, right? Um, and so that, that linkage, that's the grammatical relationship, right? So we need both words and grammar um, in order to have human language. And you recall this was right at the beginning of, of Hobbes' uh, section on speech that we read um, where he said um, it's about names and their connection. That is um, the characteristic or that's, that's what's necessary in order to have human language. Right? So basically, words and grammar. Right? <coughs> now, the way it's functioning, though, is in order to, to allow us to have truth or falsehood, is that you've, you've got the words up here, and they're referring to things, actually. There's, you know, there's, 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 you're, you're doing a comparison between the words and the things in order to determine the truth of those words. Right? So obviously, um, if, you didn't make that, if you didn't make that connection, you, you could just say anything. Right? But uh, you can determine whether it's true or false by making that comparison, right? And the comparison is specifically a comparison about this, this connection, the linkage between the two, right? Because again, if you just have the words themselves, there's, no, there's nothing about truth or falsehood that can attach to just a word. It's the connection um, that will determine whether it's a true or false statement. It's, it's, it's the truth or falseness of that connection, right? It's the quality of that connection that's really at stake, right? Because you, be, you could be saying a man is a living creature or a man is not a living creature or a man might be a living creature. But I mean, those are all possible ways of connecting the man and then this category of living creature, right? 
Um, and so essentially what, what this statement is doing is assigning man to this, basically to this category of living creatures and saying that that's true, that the man be uh, belongs to that category, right? And so the truth and falsehood connects up to that, to, or, or is, is related to that linkage. Okay, so, um, wait a minute. So the question was, how does language make truth and falsehood possible? An answer is, what's the answer to that? It makes a connection between two words, right? Um, that's how language makes truth or falsehood possible. It makes a connection between two words, right? And it's the connection that <coughs> is either true or false, right? Other questions? Are you hearing me in the back? Okay. So, the first topic that he brought up was this issue of sentences. So basically he's defining what a, a, a human sentence is, right, and telling us that you have to have a sentence in order to be able to say something true or false, okay? Then he backs up, actually, and he talks about words. Um, and so here he's really telling us, well, how do words function? I mean, how do we, you know, what, uh, what's important about words? How do they, um, how do they work into language, right? And what he's, his basic thesis here is that um, definitions are at the heart of language, right? They're the, they're the prerequisite for attaining any kind of truth. And so he's really saying that definitions are kind of the, the building blocks of, of language. So if you need the connections, um, you still have to have something connect. And he says, well, in order to have something connect, you need to have these definitions that create the words, right? So that he's saying the first use of speech, right, in the, in the, fr right, fr uh, in the right definition of names lies the first use of speech. Right? And so the right definition of names is essentially the creation of words, but he's, um, but he's telling us that the creation of words is a process of definition. And, and we'll kind of th think about what that means. What does it mean um, to define a word? Right? Um, he further states, if, so in wrong or no definitions lies the first abuse from which proceed all false and senseless tenets. Right? And so um, if you don't get the definitions right, then everything else is going to be all screwed up in your, in your thinking and in your analysis. So, so you know, if he's, if he's starting with this idea of um, right definitions, he's also giving us a sense of, well, what, ha what can go wrong in this process of language of creating definitions, right? Um, next, he says that in this process of definition, uh, it's something which makes those men that take their instruction from the authority of books and not from their own meditation to be as much below the condition of ignorant men as men endued with, in, oh, and endowed with true science and above it, right? So what, what he's saying here, he's, he's saying that, well, you know, because definitions are so key to truth, they're very important, but there's a problem. And the problem is that um, we can't take, we can't just believe all definitions. We can't just believe all words and, inst and instead, we can only arrive at these correct definitions through our own meditation and not just by the authority of books, right? Um, and so this is, again, sort of his, um, I guess, his rationalist um, thinking that says, no, we're not going to look at the authority of books solely. Um, they might be helpful, but we have to do our own thinking in order to come to conclusions about these right definitions, right? And so if you recall, you know, we had this discussion about the, uh, his, his interpretation of the Bible um, last week, where he was using the Bible as a source of truth, but he was also kind of, he was also adding his own reflections, adding his own meditations to his interpretation of the Bible, to the point where, you know, you, you could almost, I mean, one could have said, or one, one had, uh, people had accused him of actually being an atheist because he was depending so much on his own thinking, rather than just taking over um, the definitions um, that he was given. In, um, in previous works such as the Bible, especially the Bible, right? And so he's, he's emphasizing here, we're not going to be looking at the authority of books solely. We're also going to be looking at our own meditation. And we need, I mean, even, even if it's very helpful to rely on uh, previous thinking and language, of course, words, right, um, to arrive at truth, um, we need to re-examine the definitions of previous authors in order to really 
um, arrive at the correct definitions. We can't just take it on the, the faith of those, of those previous writers. Right? Um, so, um, conclusion here, there's both a use and abuse of language, and they're both connected to the ability of language to establish connections. Right? Because they can establish connections, you need them to be able to, to establish connections to be able to say anything true or false about anything. Um, and so they're really the prerequisite for any kind of, uh, of rationality or any kind of science. Right? Uh, but this ability of language to do that also provides the ability of getting things wrong, of, of getting things that are, are false. Right? And so if we, if we rely on words too much, um, and assume that they're always true, then obviously we're going to get into trouble because they can be also be false, right? So that, you know, so that he's emphasizing that the use of words um, can, um, can bring you above the situation of those that, that have not words, right? That have no words. But it can also bring you below that situation by leading you into sort of these false um, and um, erroneous um, conclusions, right? So, so, so he's, got, he's got sort of the, the both, both ways on this, and this is, gonna, this is what he's going to emphasize throughout this section, the sort of the, the, the uses and the abuses of language. Okay.